Hey, Bjorn Strong in the arm here. We are uh, with Harry and Kim on this island outside of Martinez. Uh, we've found the place where the killer shot into Claye's room from, and we're trying to find some gasoline. Oh, what's going on? You feel eyes on your back. Someone's watching, but you can't say where. Ugh. Um, yeah, so what I was going to say is we've got... Well, I've got, I've got one more thought in my thought cabinet. It's got just over an hour left. I would really like to get that thought completed before I go much further. I'm now sober. I need to find fuel for the generator, which I will then go for opening the blast door. I did offer a figurine um, to Dolores uh, die. So I don't know what the deal is with that. Uh, I thought I had... At one point, I had a, a task to use, um, wasn't this, alcohol does nothing for me anymore, to use uh, that special kind of, this one, blue medicinal spirit, and that seems to have gone, so maybe I missed the off opportunity to do that. We haven't found the murder weapon yet, but we found where it was at, which is pretty cool. Um, I want to go back there. We saw some fuel stuff over the other way. I actually am wanting, maybe thinking I should do a little bit of reading to pass some time so that I can get that final thought out. At least that's kind of how I'm hoping uh, it can go. Let's... I'm going to be careful not to run. Running... Running ain't my friend, it turns out. But I think we, we explored... Yeah, that's one unit. It all lights up together. I don't know if I can sleep again, but I'm not planning on... I also have lots of skill points uh, that I could put in lots of different places. I just don't know... I don't know what it would be useful to put them in at this point. I just... Um... I kind of want to save them, and then I can, I can put them... Like, when I'm in a dialogue, I can just up them if suddenly I know I'm going to need more for a certain thing. Close is a bit harder to deal with because I don't know... Like, I just don't know when I'm going to need that. Um, I can't reach that. I come back here. I mean, I've already looked at it. It's fuel, and I know that. This barrel's run empty. Almost nothing inside. Not enough fuel. You'll have to look elsewhere. Ugh. I mean, it felt like I'd been everywhere there was to be, except the boat, and I don't... I don't really want to do it on the boat, but I guess I will if I have to. The sound of rocks crunching doesn't make me happy either. All right, let me just pop back over. All right, we're back out this way. I am regretting a little bit the fact that I, um... The fact that I used m that, uh, fuel to do that painting. It feels like... Now it feels like a bit of an oopsie. But, let's see, I can go... Can I go further in this direction? I just don't want... I don't want to just go up in here. Oh, there's a can of fuel right there. Oh my gosh, I don't know how I missed that last time. Take the fuel canister. Let's uh, look at it. There's still some fuel in this battered canister, a liter or two. The metal looks decades old. The logo of the automotive manufacturer, LUM, has faded on the side. All right, I'm gonna just, hold on a second. What was uh, this? That was the cursed die. Um, oh, it opened, it opened white checks. Okay. Well, anyway, let's take this fuel inside, shall we? All right. And now, sus since I suspect that shit's about to get real, let's, um, Come over to my good, rusty old, uh, where is it? Not Ruby's journal. 
my book. Maybe it's in the tools. There it is. My Ledger of Failure and Hatred. Let's interact with it. Browse the case files again. Um, done inspecting these. Read a case file. That was it. The Square Bullet Hole Murders. It would be very interesting to read about these, wouldn't it? I mean, there seems to be a square-shaped entry wound in the victim's forehead. She's been sitting there for weeks, on her rocking chair, with a square hole in her skull, staring at the wall, her mouth agape. But that's all you got. From the half hour you've spent piecing it together, all you know is the entry wound was square-shaped. You never found the bullets, and then another body showed up also with a square hole in his forehead. A sequence killer? Who knows? Those pages are missing. What next? Don't worry. One day. That's an unsolved case, eh? One day, you may still catch the band with a square gun. I mean, maybe they weren't bullet holes? Maybe it was some sort of, like, funky hammers type weapon? The couch in an unexpected location... Some assholes brought their couch outside and hung out on it. The middle of the street, on the roof, on the hillside by the motorway, you know, at an unexpected location. They were young and they thought they looked cool on it. They looked really cool, like a rock band. Yes, as you've said here, insufferable rock, rock and roll assholes. Young people are the worst. So anyway, you got a complaint about the damn sofa or couch, whatever it was. They were leaving it out in all these unexpected and whimsical locations they took to, where they also took photos of themselves on it and smoked cigarettes and drank coffee because they felt it's intellectual. Cigarette butts, coffee cups, stupid couch. You had to clean it all up, and you did. So congratulations to you, case solved. Did they ever catch those guys? No, you didn't have time for that. These notes show that you have what is called a real goddamn job. You don't have time to be chasing down the couch assholes. You have a real job to do. What next? Well, let's read about the murder at the hookah parlor. Murder, tam tam at the hookah parlor was a case originally assigned to an officer called Joseph Mills, who is now dead, of circumstances completely unconnected to murder at the hookah parlor. Wait, how? Beaten to death by a throng of Villa Bobos, uh, Villa Obos gang members when him and his partner J.M., only initials mentioned, answered a call one night. It's a sad story and it isn't really represented in your case files. Stop stalling and get to the murder at the hookah parlor. Right on with the murder. Joseph Mills was on this case that he just couldn't solve. Was doing it solo. Said it was a real nutcracker. A real brain twister. Was on it for like a month. The captain got impatient. Shit or get off the pot, Mills. Mills didn't get off the pot, not yet. He kept at it for a couple of weeks more, racking his brains, running with every theory, as outlandish as they seemed. Still couldn't solve the murder at the hookah parlor. Tough case, he said. Tough as he's ever had. Well, was Joseph Mills a good cop? No, he was awful. Awful sense of humor, too. The worst jokes you've ever heard. Really rapey. Still, he'd been on it for months now. Said it was the final case. Said it was uncrackable. That the murderer vanished into thin air. That goddamn hookah parlor was all he talked about. All right, go on. Okay, so the case is uh, handed to you because Mills isn't getting anywhere. And you look into it. Here's a setup. A young man is found dead in a hookah parlor. You know, it's places where you go and smoke bubblegum flavored vapor all day. Can you get high off it? No, it's soot in water vapor. It doesn't do anything. Ah, stupid. Yeah, so anyway. Young man in his 20s, found with his skull busted open, right on the floor of the hookah parlor, in the middle of the day. No one else is in there. Only client that day. In perfect health, too. Some kind of movie producer. No one enters. No one exits. He just sucking on his watermelon hookah all morning, all noon, like he usually does. He's a regular. No calls. Nothing. Just sucking on the hookah until 1545. Then, bam, he's dead on the floor with his skull busted open. Blood everywhere. What happened? How can it be? Mills has no idea. Invisible assassin. Movie deal gone sour. Girl at the counter did it. Nothing fits. Eerie. Man just do dropped dead. So you go to the parlor. You see cushions on the table. Table's low, heavy, really sharp edge. He sucked hookah, stood up, passed out, hit his head in the table and died. See? You can't even read the thing without solving it. Yeah, it was that. Turned out hookah does do something. It turns off your brain's oxygen supply. And you don't notice it till you get up to go to the bathroom. 
He must have sucked a lot of it. Yeah, he liked his hookah. Steven was his name. And what was he doing there for six hours? Smoking hookah. Didn't you hear? I don't know. Trying to come up with a movie script, maybe. Anyway, that was murder at the hookah parlor. Joseph Mills wasn't a good detective. And about 30 minutes has passed piecing it together. Next. I'm done. Put the ledger away. Let's check out this final breakthrough. The Insulindian Miracle. It's easy. You know the poem by heart because you were taught it at school. It is one of the Vola du Mar mantras repeated on the voyage that led to the discovery of the Insulidian Isola. And the words mean, nothing will be changed about the light. Colors like gray and brown, all printed on top of each other. I found a blank white spot. All the others looked up. What a beautiful day. What beautiful weather. But all I heard was the printing machine. What strange words to celebrate a new world. All white checks unlocked. Not sure that was worth it because I have a suspicion we're not getting to do any more white checks here before the game's over. Could be wrong about that. If so, I will definitely ask uh, Lillian for another date. Not a drunk date though, like a good kind of date. Like maybe we could be friends and maybe it might even go somewhere else but if it doesn't hey wouldn't it be nice to get dinner or maybe dance or something that kind of date you know like a not a creep kind of date this old cylindrical generator wait, waits with its fuel cap open makeshift electrical wiring runs out of its side and across the floor pour fuel in the tank the lieutenant assists you holding the canister up to the fuel tank as you tilt dark brown viscous fluid pours out and the room fills with a chemical smell there's a red starter switch on the side of the cylinder and a start rope on the other side. The lieutenant flicks the switch. Pull the rope. The recoil starts, start wakes the old generator up. The machine sputters like an old war horse before settling down to a rattle. That should do it. All right, let's leave. And let's open the door. I just went orange because I lost my fuel, I presume. Man, this slow walking is really getting to me. Kim, how do you live with this? Just walking everywhere. Not running, but walking. Like, jeez. All right, now let's open that blast door. All right. It's on, he smiles. Turn emergency open. Turn emergency open. The blast door opens with a series of clicks. A shaft of light appears, then widens as the light shines in. Boom, we got a little bit further to go. That's a lot of door, dang. After you, Lieutenant gestures at the, op uh, at the opening. Before, outside, when we were walking across the sand, I felt someone watching me. So did I, not back there, but I felt it since we came here. What if we get into another fight? Don't worry. He takes out his sidearm, tucks the barrel, and holsters it again. I have a gun. I also have a gun. I know. It was not easy to acquire. <laughs> What's there? Point to the door. I don't know. Well, I don't know why you would. I don't know why I asked you. I just like to, you know, get some sort of uh, whatever information might be available before I actually try to, you know, get the information. Walk slow, it might be dangerous. I already was walking slow, but yeah, you got this. All right, um, I can't really walk down this way. Let's walk slow. I guess I can check this dot out. Oh, small white flowers blossom all around you. A rubber dinghy. It's deflated. Broken. It's a bit like me, perhaps. And there's a fellow over here. Let's just come talk to him, huh? The deserter, an old man wearing tracksuit trousers, leans on the frame stock of his rifle. 
He gathers a big ball of spit in his mouth and spits it out into the extinguished fire before him. He raises his black eyes, hooded by creased eyelids, to meet yours. Unclouded by cataracts, his eyesight is sharp. You've retained your eyesight. My eyesight, yes. <clears throat> Helps me see all this shit. Did you uh, close the blast door? I did. He... And you opened it. How? I fueled the generator, then used the console. I should have burned that console down. He shakes his head. How did you know it was coming? Reactionary rock and roll music playing on the water. <laughs> okay, okay. Told you we shouldn't play sad FM. I'm not going to say anything. The fascists were right about rock and roll. It is degenerate. Hip gyrating mental illness music. I mean, it's a nice gun you've got then. It's not there. nice. It's a piece of shit. Gets the job done. Is that a Bella Margrave? It's a Trigon 446. Not a Bella Margrave. Southeast Sumerian made exotic. Must be defunct too. No modern rifle manufacturer of that name springs to mind. A Sumerian rifle? How did you get hold of one? It was sent to us by our brothers in the Xinyao commune. Military aid. He pats the rifle. It has stayed true to him. He can still make it sing. The Xinyao commune. You heard me. It's good now. Like chalk wiped from a board. His gaze turns inward. Are you the fire guy? Uh, what now? I can't hear you. Did you recently tell two kids to put out their fire? Two twins. I may have. All sorts of little rats have come sniffing around trying to give up the position. The position? Sounds like a hiding place. Fire guy. Regressive bourgeoisie henchman. Can't even talk like a grown-up. Sir, I need a, you to put down that gun so we can talk further. We're with the police. Lieutenant pulls his pistol from the holster. You're a glorified night watchman. This is a service rifle. I can only lay it down before an enemy commander of corresponding rank. There does not seem to be a magazine in the well. The rifle's side is clearly visible. I want to put one to authority. I never have. Um, you don't even have them. Have a magazine. You're right. It's a good thing I got one in the chamber. Okay. Oh wait, yes. Do I want to challenge him? It's a red check that can't be retried. Let's... Let's do it. I hate doing this. I have a hat that gives me two authority and I'm not wearing it. And I can't put it on. I'm just going to say, keep the gun down while we talk. No. The lieutenant aims his pistol square at the man's head and says, Put it down now, sir. Or you're going to blow my brains out before you question me. To hell with it. It's a walking stick anyway. Okay, Kim. It's out of bullets. The old man lays the rifle down carelessly and looks at it lying there. Pick up the gun lying in the sand. His gaze follows your motions. The rifle feels surprisingly light in your hand. Frame stocked and patched in places with tape and wire. Inspect it closer. The rifle's in a shabby state, like a crutch that's seen too much travel. Hieroglyphs are embossed into the forearm made of walnut. On the butt, you've seen the Vespertine writing. Burnt into the wood. Triagong 4.46 millimeter, made in Hsinyao. Uh It's as he said, it's a trigon, made in Hsinyao. No one said it has to be a Belmar Belamar grave. Lieutenant does not take his eyes off the old man. We were just guessing. From ballistics, it could easily have been a trigon too. It doesn't matter if it was made in sh uh, shanty shanty. All it has to do is use jacketed ammunition, and it does. This uses jacketed ammunition, 446. 
The right type and the right caliber, Lieutenant nods, glancing at the gun. He's liking this. Stow the gun. The old man keeps following your motions with his gaze. His left arm twitches suddenly. This looked very much like the murder weapon. It can be used against him to get a confession in time. Well, who are you? My name. He looks across the water at the back of you. Is Iosef uh, Lilionovich Dross, political commissar of the 114th Anti-Aircraft Division of the 4th Army of the Commune of Revachol. I am a deserter, a partisan, and a prisoner of war. This is my termless surrender. His eyes turn to their reeds again, dead and dull. There behind them, across the Delta, the Insercom Building, Coalition Government Insulindian Mission Control. The Commune of the Revachol. Lieutenant forgets to close his mouth. Do you mean the ICM? You're a holdover from the... From the Insulidian Citizens Militia, the Army of the Revolution. I was recruited in Jamrock in 07, trained in the École de Contrôle Ariane, and consigned to emergency defense duties in 08. I left my unit on the eve of the landing. When I returned here on May 14th, the commune had fallen. Still armed and ideologically trained, I wrote a criticism of myself and resumed partisan duties. 51 minus 8 is 43. You've been on this island for 43 years? No. He looks into the fires. A wisp of smoke rises from somewhere between the charred logs. I've been on other islands, too. I was on Resurrection until they turned it into a spa in 18. Then I was on E-48, a nameless sound, until the sea washed over it. Then I came back here. That was, he thinks, 22 years ago. Again, you've been hiding here for 43 years. 43 years and 10 months. I don't even know what that is. It's inhuman. It's sick. It's not how a human being should live. But I had to. He grimaces, clearly in pain. I couldn't just forget. I couldn't just forget what I saw. He just couldn't. You couldn't give up. He nods. But he can now. What have you been doing during all this time? Hiding, fishing, waiting. He looks across the water. Two police officers step out of the Whirling and Rags cafeteria. Satellite officer Jean Vaikmeray inspects giant letters across the plaza mosaic in dark red government marked heavy fuel oil. Patrol officer Juit Manon points west. The fishing village, she glances her watch. We meet in 15 minutes, the 10 minute walk. The officers go, leaving behind their writing, still smelling of petroleum. One day, it says, I will return to your side. Always waiting. The old man turns his eyes from the shore and back to you. For what? For her to return. Her who? Girl Child Revolution. Girl Child Revolution? Always. I dare not dream anymore. Good. He blinks his black eyes. The material base for an uprising is eroded. The working class has betrayed mankind and themselves. The historic opportunity for revolution has passed. It will not come back anymore. However hard I try, whatever I do. What has he done? Perhaps a confession will lighten the load. What have you done then? Yes, what? To get things going again. Lieutenant steps closer, fan the flame. There is no flame to fan. He stares right through at him. Blinking his dark eyes, there's nothing left of the world of our dreams. You said you deserted your unit. I was just 16 years old, 15 when I was volunteered. I had a lapse of faith. He clears his throat. And of courage, too. Lapse of faith? You could say I misunderstood the historic role of the proletariat and thought Mazovian socioeconomics were fallible. For a second, I doubted the irreducible laws of historic materialism. A second is all it took. For what? For reaction to take hold. What's reaction? Petty boagi terror. It's in all men. And when was this exactly? May the 13th, 08. 44 years ago. He looks north. The horizon was black with coalition airships. The petroleum rose to the sky and it looked like... Like it formed the clouds. Storm clouds. When they started shelling, it was dark magic. Dark magic? 
the combined might of international capital all at once, all the greed and terror in the world, tore into Revachol. It lifted streets from the ground and turned houses into ghosts. We were in the flak tower. He gestures towards it. Huddled on the floor, the artillery was 80 kilometers away in ozone, but I knew, I knew the commune would fall. We would all be turned into ash. So I, sa I said I was going to the map room. He looks east. A terrible shame still within him. The lobes of his ears are red with it, the shame and smallness of what he became. You didn't go to the map room. No. I climbed the chain link across the water and hid inland. In the bunkers there, like the weakest of the weak, a mouse. Frightened of all the ordnance and all night and the sound of the rotors in the morning, whirring. Fifth, fifth, fifth. He looks at the sky. What was that? Airships. I climbed out. He closed his eyes. Into hell. The landing was complete. The chain was submerged. I had to swim back. The fortress was half submerged, too. Shattered. They'd all drowned in the lower levels, or got torn to shreds above. The anti-aircraft gun had malfunctioned. So had I. I had left them without ideological direction. He opened his eyes and stares right through you. It was real. I'd seen it. I'd seen it in reality. Seen what? The mask of humanity fall from capital. And I had to take it off to kill everyone. Everything you love, all the hope and tenderness in the world. And I had to take it off just for one second to do the deed. And then you see it. As it strangles and beats your friends to death, the sweetest, most courageous people in the world. He's silent for a second. You see the fear and power in its eyes. Then you know. What? That the bourgeois are not human. Say nothing. Let him finish. He might confess if I let him f keep going. I had to. I had to fight it. I had to never stop. The old man falls silent. His black eyes keep piercing your skin as he looks to some great distance behind you, shaking his head slowly, retreating, retreating from it. What is this place, this island? It's not an island, Droit. He looks around. It's an offensive fortification of the commune of Revachol, and I am its last surviving defender. What was it used for? The congenitally deformed King Philippe II built it to restrict access to the Bay of Revachol. We captured it in O2, retrofitted the fort with an AA gun to defend against an airborne landing against the whole world. You mean the landing, retaking of Revachol? Coalition military called it Operation Death Blow, he winces. I later found out on the radio they called it Death Blow. You're one of them. Tell me, who speaks like that? We had 50 million people on Caillou alone. Murderers. I know what you mean. You don't know. You haven't seen it. He shakes his head slowly. Iblis. Iblis? The black-eyed angel, he nods. How have you survived all this time? How does anyone survive? He looks at his worn running shoes. I steal. What do you steal? Supplies, vegetables, he winces. I collect rainwater. It's the life of a dog, not a human being. He coughs once more, then puts his hand on his belly. How is your health, Mr. Dross? I've been throwing up blood since winter. Red like beetroot. Been passing it in stool, too. He does seem frail, gaunt for his age, more like 75 than 65. Trouble putting on weight could mean cancer. The RCM can provide medical services. You need to be looked over. He's not going to like that. I need to die. A droll smile stretches across his mouth. You don't have any medical facilities. You have guns. That's all they give you. Toy guns. We have druamine and other opioid-based painkillers. You must be in pain. A light goes on in his eyes. He smacks his dry lips. I have been running out of that stuff. Um, how have you coped mentally? I haven't. I have holes in my brain. Years missing, others filled with pain only. A decade of... His eyes roll into his skull and back. I don't even know what. Inferno. Not appreciatively, I also live in hell. At least you know it. 
He nods towards Martin Ace. The traitors this city and turned the lights back on in the 30s, after the fighting stopped. Ruins glittering in the dark, like a fucking merry-go-round. It's disgusting. He looks down at his shoes, his face parched from the sun and the wind. There's a wince of pain in there somewhere. Are they not heartbroken? How could they have moved on? How have you concealed yourself all these years? It was hard in the tens. He shakes his head. I didn't have any partisan training. They were searching for stragglers, those bloodhounds. He closed his eyes, floodlights on the water at night. There were posters, campaigns. We communards still hoped that they needed to snuff that hope out. These capitulated, Martin Ace and Cole City were turned to dust. He looks south. But Jamrock, Faubourg, even Coron. And Boogie Street, of course. Those fucking kips had Mazov coursing through their veins. And others, too. Some cordons of Revachal were still fighting. There were cells. I tried to contact them. He shakes his head. Soon they all went silent. The frequency's dead. How would you get between here and the mainland? I mean, maybe the, the inflatable dinghy we saw? A night is a dinghy. He nods towards the deflated tire in the reeds. I only went after dark then. When I got to the city, I stayed underground. Patrols, you lot. The commons, too, they'd start snitching. In the city, you move underground. From bunker to bunker, he nods. Not anymore. No one cares now. I don't even have to hide. They think I'm another antisocial vagrant. I mean, let's be honest, you are. But I could walk straight into that town if I want. I just... He falls silent, his gaze fixed on the shacks huddled together across the water. The weapons cache under St. Ghislaine 22B, in the basement. Have you been there? He looks at you, then pulls the raincoat tighter around his neck. So you finally found it. There must have been a small squadron worth of arms in there. Bell Margraves, right? They were damaged beyond use. I know. So you've been there. Sleeping, he coughs. Some nights. Ammo scrounging on others. Those Margraves were shit even before they corroded. Some have bullets in the chamber, however. You feel the dots connecting. Little dots on the map he's walked across. It's a small bunker under the Feld building. Have you stayed there? The propaganda bunker. He coughs. I used to, but not anymore. Propaganda bunker. They stored leaflets there. Broadcasting equipment, too. Made broadcasts, I think. Propaganda officers. I buried them with their leaflets. They killed themselves. Two young boys. Killed themselves. A lot of our boys did. I spent some winters there. Never liked it. Kept thinking of them. He stares at the ruins of the Fell building. No need to go underground anymore. It's better in the ruins on the ground. Why don't you just walk into the city? I don't want to. They're all traitors. Pigs, rabbits, and dogs. Men without ideals for only animals. He does not want to see life moving on. People forgetting. Drinking, laughing. So one more question. Do you smoke uh, Tio Moret Poriti, Mortiri, I mean, cigarettes? I do, he coughs. Ever smoke them on the mainland? They're good, he nods. Plenty of tar. I like that boy in the pack, too. Reminds me of the last century. Tell me another thing. The old man looks across the water at the city, the ruins, the motorway rising above it. So you're a communist soldier from the communist army? No, I'm not a soldier. I'm an ideological officer. I belong to the party, not the army. But you said you were trained and assigned to the Defense Corps. Trained, he nods, in historical materialism. Then assigned as a po political commissar by the party. These things used to mean something. That means you're a trained communist, right? He nods slowly. Uh, other tremor. Then another tremor. Say nothing. He looks away to the sea and lets out a cough. You said this is your termless surrender? You're with the RCM. He waves in your general direction. The coalition appointed mob that enforces bourgeois morals in Revachal. We're with the RCM. Let's leave it at that. Let's. He looks you in the eye. You represent the moralist international, the enemies of humanity who took this city. I represent their adversary, Le Parit Communiste d'Insulinde. Take me to them as a prisoner of war. I've relinquished my weapon. I can no longer serve. No superiors can relieve me of my duty. You bulldoze them all to a mass grave for trying to free humanity. His hand shakes and he breaks into a coughing fit. A spray of blood from his mouth on the black charcoal in the fire pit. 
Rene, the royalist on the coast, said, You never signed the Revacholian instrument of surrender. Only the army. Liberal reactionaries signed it for them. Traitors who should have been burned alive. He draws his breath. I am a political office commissar of the Communist Party, and the party never surrendered. Is that part of why you've been here all this time? Because the party didn't surrender? He just wipes the blood from his chin. Understood. I don't think you did. He stares the fire pit. You live in a delusion. Radio shows, speed racing, and sporting goods. It's not real. I mean, it's not fake. I have another serious question for you. There is nothing serious in this world. He looks at his gun in your hand. It's a farce. Assess his body language. That is low. I can... I'm going to put two into composure. It's now at 28, but I can retry it. Uh, for a 60-year-old man with stomach trouble who spent his entire life alone on an uninhabited island, he seems surprisingly fit. That's it, squint at him. Um, he's prone to erratic hand gestures and clearly malnourished. But that's it. You can see no more by looking at his slouch frame. The moment passes and you say, What have you been using this gun for? I've used it for killing people. Killing people? It's a gun. It's what they're for. You want a moralist euphemism? Defending your family and your property? I haven't done that. I've used it to kill people. Interesting. Lieutenant nods. During or after the war? There is no after the war. He shakes his head and smiles, his teeth rotten black. Class war is never over. So he's continued killing after hostilities ended. Okay, okay. This is it. You can feel it like battery acid on the tip of your tongue. Something you haven't felt in a while, but... But what? This is what you live for. This is the shit. The great serotonin jackpot. The solution. Going straight. You No euphemisms. He doesn't like those. No, no, be careful now. Instead, he does it. Make him repeat it first. Don't mess this up. Remember... He wants to tell you. Get personal. Wait. So you're saying you kill people after active fighting stopped. Did you use that gun to shoot and kill a colonel of the security contractor, Krennel? I know you want to tell me. Have you killed anyone with that gun in the last week or two? Or wait, which one do I say? Nothing. Nothing comes in silence. They all want to give me advice. I know you want to tell me. Have you killed anyone with that gun in the last week or two? I don't want to tell you anything, you grotesque murderer. Now, why do you think that was a good idea? Listen to me, I'm wrong all the time. Well, you kind of are. So you're saying you kill people after active fighting stopped? What did I just say? He keeps shaking his head erratically suddenly. He brushes something out of his eye. What did I just tell you? Don't drop the ball. Well, sorry, rhetoric. What did I just tell you? Don't drop the ball now. So now rhetoric thinks he's the guy on top. Did you use that gun to shoot and kill a colonel of the security contractor, Krennel? The who now? He leans in and cups his ear. He heard you. He just wants to he hear you say it. You're in. The fascist death squad who took a bullet in the mouth on the night of March 4th. Play him, play right into his hands. He's going to want to hear that. Oh, yes, that one. He looks up the sky, clacks his tongue. Ugly piece of work, that boy. Did you kill him? Lieutenant takes a sudden step forward. I am a son of a welder and an officer of the commune of Revachal. He spits a big one at the lieutenant's feet. I do not collaborate with murderers and pederasts of the liberal regime. Exhaust him with proof. Pilot, on all, uh, pilot all on him get a confession. The gun, the murder weapon, is the perfect opener. The scent of blood in the air, but what else? There was something you can't remember. Something about the tracks? Suddenly, all those tracks are so confusing. Go with something else first. Okay. The murder weapon is a good opener. I agree.
Let's back off for a moment. Tell me this. Okay, we want to get a confession from him. Um, stay put for a moment. I ain't going anywhere. We're absolutely going to work on... First of all, can we examine the gun? We totally can't. We have it. There's no... It's missing a scope. I never did find a scope. Where would that have been? All right. Um, perception says, hear that? Magnesium. That's what you're lacking. The lack of magnesium has you slouched. It's a lack of magnesium in me? Yes, and it's critical. Look at yourself. You're practically devolving into a fish due to lack of magnesium in your blood s bloodstream. I need to mag it up? You need to get so magged up. You probably had a heart, two heart attacks and a minor stroke already. And the only prescription is insane amounts of magnesium. You're saying I need to become a magnesium-based life form? Yes, if you want to live, you need to evolve. You need to ascend the carbon barrier. Go to the apothecary and buy insane amounts of magnesium. It'll reverse the damage to your circulatory system. I'm not buying that. Like, is there, is there anything we missed? What have we missed? Kim, what have we missed? 